There's two types of spoons, as far as I'm concerned. You got a flutter spoon and you got a slab spoon. My general rule of thumb is in the, when it starts to cool off 70 degrees or cooler, I like to throw a slab spoon like this War Eagle 7 8 ounce slab spoon. It's a direct and vertical fall. You can flip it about anywhere, not saying that you'll get it back if you flip it in there, but something about that straight down fast fall that they like in the colder water. Now when the water's 70 degrees or warmer, I like to go to a flutter spoon and that erratic, slow, not knowing where that, traje that rear trajectory, that spoon shoots up and underneath the dock somewhere, you really don't know where it's going. For some reason, they really like that spoon when it's warmer than 70 degrees. I'm not looking for shallow docks. If I'm going to shallow dock fish, I'm going to use a little jig or something like that. I'm looking for deeper docks like this one here. See, we still got four stalls left. We're in 20 foot already. Chances are it's at least 40 foot deep, maybe 60 foot deep down here. You want those docks that cast a lot of shade and their main cover is just a big old shadow. So I'll get on the back side of the dock that has the most shadow and that's generally where you'll catch most of your fish. Most of the time too, it's not a bottom bite. It's a suspended fish and they'll hit your spoon most of the time when it's really good, they'll hit it as it's falling. There is no better feeling than to flip that old spoon in there and let it sink just a little bit and just Automatically, you don't no bite to it, it just stops. My rod, reel, and line are very important components, just like the crankbait guy or spinnerbaiting guy is. With spooning boat docks and spooning open water or just throwing a slab spoon or a flutter spoon will require some specific equipment that really helps the cause. I find that it's very important to one, when you're going in here to do this, to use a 20 or 25 pound fluorocarbon line. You don't want to go in here with a 15 pound line. It's not strong enough. Another thing is I want a super fast reel like a seven to one. I use a pro qualifier because it holds a lot of line. And the next thing, the rod. The rod's important. Now you don't want to use a 710 punch rod. If you can get away with it, I would, but you can't because a lot of times you're in tight quarters. So the seven six flipping stick, heavy action flipping stick, Again, you're not finessing anything about this. You, you, once you get that fish, you wanna be able to bring him out of this boat dock slip, whether it's an open one or a congested one like this one here with two jet skis in it. Let me show you one thing too to look for. If you're on a spoon bite and you might have some buddies that do it too, you can come in and you can kind of know where they've been. Take a look at that. See that? Cobwebs. So that's a surefire sign that nobody's been up there. So. If you're not confident where people have fished, just look for cobwebs. Most of the time, if you see a cobweb like that, you know that that little stretch hadn't been thrown at.